And King James has called him the Fresh Prince for a reason, not just because he's in Philadelphia. Ben Simmons has led the Sixers to a 25-6 and record since February 1st with seven triple-doubles of his own. Karan, do you see the Sixers now as the team to beat in the Eastern Conference? Well, they're definitely, they're definitely a young team that they don't know any better. You know what I mean? And that's scary, like going into the playoffs. This is a young team that don't understand that they don't supposed to be. Right. Beat you well, in the I was going to ask if their inexperience could perhaps play in their favor in this situation. I think it's a good thing. And they also take on the personality of their best pay player in Joel Embiid. He's a guy that posts things on social media, got a little <laughs> nonchalant attitude about him. And I think they adapted that attitude and that personnel from him. Uh, that personality from him, and that's 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 helped them. It's a bit wild to consider that Ben Simmons <laughs> is actually their second best player, with Joel Embiid, of course, on the bench. A triple double in the win over the Cavs: 27 points, 15 rebounds, 13 assists. Wow. How has he taken his game to this next level? I think he's doing an excellent job of rebounding the basketball and getting out into transition. And as you see, you know, he's just aggressive. You know, he's finding a way to, you know, keep the pressure on the defense as much as possible every game during this stretch. You know, even with Joel and B out, and that's what's been more impressive than anything for me. Like, if you're watching him right here, he's getting out in the open court. As you can see, bodies are back. And what he's going to do is knife across, throw it to Covington, who's usually, you know, somewhere on the perimeter spotted up. And you saw him with the easy two. And then once again, catching the ball right here, outlet, outlet. A little quick pass with the right hand, the offhand, left-handed guy, finding Covington again, going down the middle. And then this is what I really love. You know, this backing now, taking advantage of the mismatch, you know, have a smaller guy on you. Nope, I'm going to go to the right hand, easy two. And then getting into transition again, using his body and his size and his quickness and agility, creating opportunities for others, getting into the seam of the defense. This is one of the things that I love about his game and his versatility. He's showing a lot of growth on the fly. And he sees the floor unbelievably well, which is unique for someone with as little professional experience as he has. That's because of his size. And he has a great feel. Like, whatever it is, he has it. And then he has the size to see over the defenders. So when, once you trap him, you're usually bringing a smaller guy at him. And when you bring a big guy at him, he's attacking the big. And now he get the, you know, just take advantage of them off the dribble. Without Joel Embiid in this lineup, others have been stepping up, not just out of necessity, but because they have been seasoned to all year long. What can be said of the Sixers' supporting cast at this point? I think, you know, big fella always say it. Sha Shaquille O'Neal always say that you need the others to win the championship. And if mm -hmm. you look at this team right here, Covington, J.J. Redick, Marco Bellinelli, Ersan Lilia Sova, you're talking about young fella and Markel folks coming back the last couple of games. All these guys are stepping up on a major level and knocking down shots. So could the Sixers make the finals after missing the playoffs just a season before? It's been done four times. Of course, that Cavalier team in 2014-15 added one LeBron James to their roster. It could happen. It definitely can happen. You look at the favorite right now, the number one seed is the Toronto Raptors. But... You look at the Cleveland Cavaliers, one of the things that, you know, hindered them is the defensive thing. Now, can they turn that on? That's something that we're going to talk about later in the show. But, you know, this thing is wide open for them. You know, it really is. The Eastern Conference is wide open, and the Boston Celtics, they're hindered with injuries with Kyrie and those guys being out. So it's going to be interesting going forward. But despite the Cavs' loss, until they are beaten <laughs> in April or May, can you consider any other team apart from a LeBron James-led team to be the favorite? Hey, it's the reason why LeBron keep calling Ben Simmons the Fresh Prince. Right, he's That's one notch below the, the king. king. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the Cavs have not exactly struggled to score, and LeBron James is doing it from inside and out, not just with his scoring ability, but, again, his ability to see the floor as well as he does. Yeah, he's doing an excellent job of just, you know, scoring, being aggressive, being more aggressive than we've seen him traditionally in the past few years. But offensively, you know, um, he's just been remarkable. But defensively is where they got to hang the hat. That's yes. the key. Yes. Where do you see those defensive lapses happening? I think in transition for the most part. They're having a problem getting back with faster teams. And you, you wouldn't think that would be the case. 
you know, after losing some of the older guys that they did have, now they got a lot of youth on the squad. But look at this. Ben Simmons coming down the transition, going downhill against a relatively great athlete in Jeff Green and getting a second chance opportunity. And then we talk about the Fresh Prince. Ben Simmons again going downhill, playing with the ball. You see the defenders right there. That's a wall. That's created, but you know, they got moving pieces. JJ Reddick, Marco Bellinelli, guys like that. That's what they're gonna have to face in the playoff stretch and the Cavs gotta do a better job of, you know, creating that wall of getting out to guys. And then you can never leave a guy like JJ Reddick. Any given time, airspace, he's gonna knock down that shot. And then once again, you see Ursai Ilyasova. I could beat him in a sprint right now today. <laughs> Today. And they get down court, downhill, <laughs> flushing for the two with Ben Simmons with no defenders down in the paint. That's a problem, and that's something that has to be addressed. I spoke to a member of the Cavaliers staff who told me, well, defensively, it's just we got to get back in transition. We're getting beat one-on-one, -on -one, and we're really just getting beat in half-court sets. Okay, so that's, <laughs> that's everything. all of 